Welcome everyone to St. James Episcopal Church in Tempe, Arizona. My name is Pastor Andrea White and I'm the interim rector. And on behalf of St. James, we are glad to have you join our service today. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. forever. 
Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now bow down before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord. Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We, we confess, confess to you, you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comfort and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord, Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring, Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent, and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you and, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely be there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, said the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 51. Let us read responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. And will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he
he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. 
Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord, open our hearts to hear your word and guide us in sharing this good news. In your name we ask, amen. Good morning and welcome. Never having lived or been on a farm, I admit I don't know a lot about planting and harvesting. And interestingly enough, studying the scripture, I realized that there is something different about a grain versus a seed. I mean, why didn't Jesus say, a seed of wheat, as opposed to saying a grain of wheat. Now, believing this is significant, I attempted to learn more about a seed versus a grain. As I studied, I have tried to put what I learned in more simplistic of terms that I felt will help me to understand, and I'd like to share it with you now. A seed is like a cocoon and transformation occurs. It could be like a mustard seed that grows into a strong rooted tree or an acorn that sheds its outer skin to become a solid oak tree. Grains on the other hand, have more of a body to them, a stem and leaves and what's referred to as fruit at the top. The fruit contains multiple clusters of seed-like organisms. While this might not be the most scientific of explanations, so I do ask forgiveness of our scientist and botanist friends, I like to think that the seed transforms much like a moth to a butterfly. While the wheat produces an exact replica multiples of itself, these multiples in the case of wheat bring more food for sharing and life. And it is in this living that the wheat provides sustenance. So when the grain of wheat dies or decays, it is nourished by the elements and grows more wheat stalks. The significance of this imagery will help us to understand Jesus' path to death and victory. For we must die to be reborn. We must let go of our sins and consumerism and be reborn to do the work of God's kingdom, to become the foundation sustenance for so much of life, to replicate as humans and beloved children of God. Returning to the beginning of John's gospel message, the timing and context of this message helps us to understand the path Jesus is undertaking. As the crowds continue to gather, making the high priest nervous, pilgrimage for Passover are now taking place. As today's passage begins, Greeks approach the apostle Philip asking to seek Jesus. We read where Philip turns to Andrew and they both go to ask Jesus. Again, what most scholars agree on is that the significance of Jesus's response to this seeking is a trigger for him. This is the sign, the start of what Jesus knows will be the beginning of the end because the son of man will be raised up and glorified. This then is a demonstration of how Jesus is being glorified, being raised up as the Messiah. The Greeks are coming to listen to his word and wanting to learn and take Jesus's message and actions back to their communities. Jesus responds is to say, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified, meaning Jesus is being raised up beyond the current community. Knowing this reminds him that obedience to God will lead to his greater sacrifice. In the gospel reading, we hear Jesus continue to explain using the analogy of the grain of wheat, not a seed of wheat. When he says, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Meaning that if the grain of wheat does not die, the kingdom of wheat won't exist. The wheat must die in the earth in order to be raised up, in order to grow and be fruitful and to raise up more wheat. To this end, we could say that as a grain of wheat dies and replicates, the analogy leads us to understand it is replicating all 
beloved children of God. Our outside wheat fruit may be white, brown, black, olive. Inside, we are all the same. We are human, and we acknowledge that we are all made in God's image. Jesus is about to embark on the final act of love. We have already studied how the cross can be our symbol, but it's our actions that defines us. It's our living as followers of Jesus that defines us. It's our free will choice that defines us. It's our acceptance and tolerance of others that defines us. Of course, we are more comfortable when we seek out others similar to us, but the real gift of love is seeking out those who make us uncomfortable. This past week has brought into our homes and consciousness a disturbing pattern of more hate. We know that not everyone subscribes to a faith and a belief in a loving God. And so we continue to see acts of violence even now against our Asian siblings. This Sunday in our prayers of the people, in our own diocese, we pray for St. Andrews in Sedona. At St. James, we have a special relationship with St. Andrews as we work with the parishioner there for our Navajo Nation blanket outreach. Additionally, I have the privilege of working with the Reverend Monica Whitaker, who is rector at St. Andrews Sedona, and she is also the co-chair for the Anti-Racism Committee, of which I am a member. And prior to coming to Arizona, she lived, worked, and worshipped in San Francisco. As a result of what happened, Reverend Monica wrote a letter to her congregation and shared it with a number of us. She has given me permission to read to you now portions of her spirit-filled letter. She begins, most of you know that I am of mixed race, a descendant of immigrants. My mother grew up in Hawaii and is a third generation Chinese American. My father was white and a Mayflower descendant. In white cultures, I pass as white, but in Asian cultures, it's obvious that I am half white. She continues, last month, an 84 year old Thai man died after being attacked during a morning walk in his own San Francisco neighborhood. A few days later, a 91 year old Asian man was slammed down to the sidewalk while walking through Oakland's Chinatown. This senseless act occurred in broad daylight, just two blocks from the Episcopal church where I have worshiped and in the vicinity of restaurants where I have gathered with Asian friends. I know this neighborhood. A week later, as the Lunar New Year approached, reports of violence, robbery, and racial slurs increased in many Asian communities across the country. These incidents are only a few of the more than 3,800 racially motivated attacks against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States during the COVID-19 pandemic. Acts of violence, verbal harassment, coughing, spitting, Discrimination, shunning, and child bullying against Asians have risen, has risen exponentially over the past year, especially against Asian women. Earlier this week, eight people were murdered in the Atlanta area. Most of the victims were women of Asian descent. For many people of color, there is no doubt that this act of violence was a racially motivated misogynistic hate crime. Racism is a sin that must be dismantled and eradicated. Over several decades, the Episcopal Church has passed resolutions at General Convention to dismantle systems of oppression and work toward racial healing and reconciliation. But it's up to predominantly white dioceses and parishes like ours to explore the intersection of race and faith. It is up to us to engage in collaborative spiritual and practical work to address racial injustice and oppression. It is up to us to develop positive relationships with Asians and other people of color and shape our communities toward becoming God's beloved community. She then concludes her letter to the congregation with the following. Thanks to those of you who have already reached out with kind words of support. I invite your prayers for all Asian Americans who are living in fear, including my 85-year-old mother, who is now wondering if it is safe to even go to a doctor appointment. Yours in Christ, Reverend Monica. It seems fitting and appropriate that as we pray for St. Andrew's Sedona this morning, 
that we add in a prayer for all our Asian siblings and people of color. And it's even okay to pray for her 85 year old mother to be comfortable getting to the doctor. It is even more appropriate in light of our gospel message today to welcome those who are outside of our faith and to reinforce with them that we are all beloved children of God, regardless of our heritage, the language we speak, our gender expression, or the color of our skin. Jesus is preparing his disciples and us that like the grain of wheat, we can die and raise up many more in Christ, finding eternal life and the victory over death. It's not just about the science of agriculture. Instead, I encourage us to think on it as the science of love, accepting the sacrifice Jesus makes for us and shaping our lives to follow in his teaching. Hindsight works for us with more than 2000 years ago and where we are today. And we know how the story ends and really begins. But even in that knowing, we must not forget that Jesus continues to prepare us for the kingdom, just as we hear in today's gospel, and as Jesus tried to do with his disciples. Let us bless each other and walk together as followers in the Jesus movement, making sure we are worthy by preparing for Jesus's love and sacrifice through our words and actions. Amen.
Let us join together and affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us offer our prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We are baptized to lift up day by day the needs of the entire world to God. Let us pray for all who are in need, saying, Have mercy, O Lord. For the church and for our clergy, that the fasting of these 40 days may clear away much that is needless and open our eyes to the bright glory of the cross. For this we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For those everywhere who will be baptized at Easter, that they will learn from us to read, ponder, and cherish the Holy Scriptures. For this we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For our divided and restless world, and especially for the leaders of our nation, the President, Congress, and other leaders in government that hold power over others, may they be troubled and transformed by the demands of justice. For this we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For children, that infants and young people of every nation may have food, clean water, and access to education, and that they may grow and love their world, for this we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For all that are suffering, the sick, the homeless, those who struggle with addictions, prisoners, exiles, and refugees, those who have disabilities, and especially those who have asked for our prayers in our church family. Janie, Dana, Christy, Carrie, Simon, Patty, the Mueller family, the Spence family, Sandra, Robert, the Hollis family, the Hulls family, Luke, Rob, Jeff, Ted, Tom, Nancy, Gary, Lydia, and Andrea our siblings and families in Navajo land, those affected by COVID-19 and our frontline medical providers, Becky, Tessa, Pat, Ashley, Damian, Donald, and Lynn. We pray that they may find places of rest and kindness, strength of spirit, and love for the simple gifts of God. We acknowledge, pay respect, and pray for the Salt River Pima and Maricopa Indi Indigenous Community, 
as the original people of the land and their role as custodians of this land given to them by our one and only creator God. We pray for all affected by violence, terrorism, and natural disaster, and for those in the military. We pray also that God will send us those who are hungry to know and follow Jesus, that we might welcome and walk with them on their spiritual journey. We also pray for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Western Mexico. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of England and in our own diocese for St. Andrews in Sedona. For all this we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For this gathered community, that the solemn brightness of Lent may open our eyes to these times, their folly and their worth. For this we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For all who have died and those at rest in our memorial garden, that they may be at peace. For this we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. God of goodness and mercy, whose ways are beyond our knowing or approving. Remember us and all whom we hold in our hearts and remind us of all whom we would forget. In these 40 days, teach us to do the work of our baptism and daily raise to you the needs of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the bread and wine. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. While we long to receive the sacrament of Christ's body, we, we become, become the, the sacrament, sacrament of Christ's body. body. Let your lives be manna to feed our hunger for communion. The, the love we share becomes bread for the world. world. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Please accept the greetings of the people. We have three birthdays to celebrate today. Cheryl Houle, Adam Peterson, and Kareen Henry. So please join me as we pray for them today. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have no anniversaries uh, that we know of at this time to celebrate, so we will move to our announcements. Just a reminder that we will have our virtual coffee hour today at 1030 after the service, followed by Christian formation at 130. 
uh, p.m. Uh, you can find links in the Thursday Thoughts email. Well, we're down to the Lunt Madness Sweet 16, and we actually may have some people on the way to finding the golden halo. So thank you for all who have made generous contributions to our Lent Madness Ministry Pool Fund. Right now, we're just a little over $250 at this time. So if you have any questions or would still like to make a donation, um, you can contact Diana in the office or see the information in the weekly emails, or you can contact me directly. Thank you. We are getting ready for Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday on March 28th. All Holy Week services will be live streamed and more information is in the March newsletter as well as in the weekly emails. We've opened a reservation system this past Monday, March 15th. This will be used to allow members of the congregation to join us in the sanctuary for worship. We're still under COVID protocol and the plan we filed with the diocese for regathering. Please see the weekly emails for information on how to participate, or you can call Diana in the office during her regular office hours, Monday to Thursday, nine to three. Speaking of Palm Sunday, we will be meeting to make the Palm Crosses on Saturday, March 27th from one to 3 p.m. outside on that East patio. Masks are required and we will be social distancing and we have plenty of hand sanitizer to spread around. But please bring your own beverage uh, as, as you would need one. Send an email to me, if you would please, at deacon at stjamestempe.org to let me know so we can get an idea of how many folks will be with us and we can set up the stations and, and make sure that we are following our COVID protocols. We really appreciate it and all ages are welcome. Hope to see you then, thank you. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.